and welcome back to my channel. So, first things first, you may notice that I'm wearing a jean jacket in the middle of summer. Actually, it's the end of summer, but still, it is like very hot right now and I'm sweating. And that is because it is my lab coat. Lab coat? I'm a scientist today! Yay! So, today's video, I'm going to be talking about the brain in a Google Slide presentation that I made. The Google Slide presentation itself probably took me a day, but it was a lot of hard work. Okay, it actually was not that hard. I was just exaggerating. So I really hope you enjoy this. Um, basically, the entire video is just going to be me, like, with a voiceover talking over my Google Slides presentation. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and yeah, we'll get right on to it right now. Okay, guys, so here is my presentation that I created today. Creativity in the Brain by Charlotte. First slide, location. Before we get on to location, here's some helpful tips that will help with you later in the presentation that are important to know. One, we use both the left and right side of the brain for creativity. Many people think it is just the right, but they're wrong. We actually use both, and I'll get more into that later. Two, there's over 40 sections of the brain that are creativity related, not just one. But with this location slide, I'm going to narrow it down to the big picture. Here's a helpful chart with labels that show which part of the brain is which. And today, we're going to be focusing on the frontal lobe, this highlighted area here. Now, I happen to have this book in my house, and I was scrolling through it, seeing if like there was any page that was good, and it said on page 98, that the thought of the area at the front of the brain helps us think, solve problems, and be creative. That got my attention. And the front of that sentence, or the beginning of it, said the thought area. Now, the thought area must be like a state inside the country of the frontal lobe, right? So, I did my research, and it's actually right here. Now, it's on the right side of the brain, and this chart is the left side of the brain. So, I know that's kind of confusing, so here's a bird's eye view of basically what it is. That little circled area here is basically the general section of the brain for creativity. And on a human face, it'd be around here. So go ahead, touch it. Okay, the left and right. So on this little slide over here, there we've got a man up in the corner and that's just basically what it looks like on a human. And then we've got the full brain and the brain chopped in half. We're going to look at the brain chopped in half. So we got the left and the right. On the left, we've got the strategy, logic, cleanliness, organization, passion, processing, words, numbers, and planning. Sounds kind of boring, like things you learn in school or in an office. So I have narrowed that down to proper and logical. Now look at the right. We've got think, write, vision, love, drawing, art, passion, imagination, typography. This sounds a little bit more of what I'm liking, so I narrowed it down to creative and artistic. Okay, take a look at the left chart. We've got passion. You wouldn't think there'd be much passion because many people think of the left side of the brain as boring. Whereas, actually, there's a lot. And there's passion, because look at the other words. There's, like, strategy, logic, cleanliness, organizing, processing, words, numbers, all those things. Some people really like that stuff. Not me, but, like, a lot of people do. A lot of people like um, logic. They like making to-do lists. They like numbers and plannings and organizings. Hey, I'm Jason. Peace to meet you. Okay, and then on the right, look again. We've got passion as well. There's passion for people who love music and people who love drawing and singing and art and thinking. Some people just love thinking. There's writing, all those things. So there's actually passion for both the left and the right side of the brain, which is wonderful. Okay. Final slide, the secret. So this is kind of a complicated conversation, so let's narrow it down with some emojis. Here are emojis. First, we've got the guy that's just kind of like, uh, and then he's thinking, thinking, bam, he's got an idea, and now he's happy. 
But whatever happened in between thinking, thinking, and then getting an idea? Like, how did he just get that idea? Well, after having this YouTube channel, I've thought a lot about just that. And my explanation is, as your mind is wandering, you relate to things you sense and what was on your mind previously. So, as an example, take this stick. Albert says... How many things can you make with that stick? Your brain is going to go through this process. And as your mind is wandering, you relate to things you sense and what was on your mind previously. Like, maybe on my mind previously was sitting at the park on a bench, and all of a sudden I get an idea. One of those ideas is a bench made out of sticks. And of course I have a ton of others too. But some people only have one. Or some might not have any. But that is our final result. And the truth is, if there are multiple people, all will not have the same exact results. Your results differ on how you think. Because everyone's different. That's all for today. Now, back to regular Charlotte. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it because it didn't actually take me that long, but it was a lot of hard work in like one day. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you do like it, please click the like button so I can know like if you want more scientific videos in the future. Um, and click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. I post every three weeks and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!